Welcome to webinar five, how to attract private impact investors. In this webinar, we're going to cover a lot of ground and fundamentals, so I hope you're ready. The objective of this webinar is to share with you the fundamentals around the concept of social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and responsible businesses, which are all connected at the end of the day. By the end of this webinar, you should be able to understand what social innovation and entrepreneurship is, what impact investing means, understand the impact investing ecosystem, and how to engage with private investors. Okay, let's jump on the agenda of this webinar. This webinar will be organized around four videos. First one on social entrepreneurship and impact, second one on impact investing, third one on finding impact investors, and fourth on how to set the vision and why this is needed for, for social entrepreneurs. Here are the key topics that we are going to talk about. Uh, I give you a couple of seconds to, to look at them. All right, so in this first video, we're going to focus on what social entrepreneurship and innovation is and what impact means. Business as usual is not an option anymore. I would like to start with the definition of sustainability. I'm sure you're all familiar with this concept. Sustainability means meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This is a holistic approach that considers ecological, social, and economic dimensions, recognizing that all must be considered together to find lasting prosperity. This has been defined by the Brundtland Commission in 1983. If we look back to, say, 100 or 50 years ago, we obviously made a lot of progress. Girls go to school more than ever, Majority of the people are vaccinated, digitalization of a world and the widespread of technology has brought a lot of comfort. However, we still live in a world of tremendous inequalities. Almost a quarter of the global population live below the poverty line. Close to 800 million people still don't have access to electricity. And the Global Gender Gap Report estimates that it will take an average of 135 years for women and men to reach parity on a range of factors worldwide. And I won't even start on climate change because there's so much to say. From a macroeconomic perspective, we should shift from an extractive economy to a regenerative economy. Extractive economy meaning essentially business as usual. Think linear processes, accumulation of wealth and power in, the, in a few hands. Whereas regenerative economy means moving away from extractive business models and unlocking the potential for positive contributions for nature and society. So the question is, what are we waiting to change our economic models, changing our old patterns and addressing once and for all the entire social and ecological crisis we are facing? We live in a world where value means economic value. But if I was to ask you what you value the most, I'm sure you would talk about your family, your friends, your hobbies, your job, but money wouldn't be the first answer. And still our economic models revolve around profit maximization at the expense of the people and our planet. Same flaws apply to traditional finance where shareholder, shareholder supremacy is king. So who is going to step in? How are we going to move away from our current business practices? Let's look at social innovation, one of the solutions to address those issues. Social innovation is the process of developing and deploying effective solutions to challenging and often systemic social and environmental issues in support of social progress. Social innovation is not the prerogative or privilege of, of any organizational form or legal structure. Solutions often require the active collaboration of constituents across governments, business, and the nonprofit world. Social innovation is the base of social entrepreneurship. 
So look at the three examples that I've put here on the slides. I'm sure you are familiar with, with those three social innovation. First one is fair trade, an arrangement designed to help producers in developing countries achieve sustainable and equitable trade relationships. In the middle, this is a picture of Professor Mohammad Yunus, the father of microfinance and the founder of the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh. And the third one, I'm sure you are all familiar with it. This is Wikipedia, a free online encyclopedia created and edited by volunteers. Those are three social innovation that moved into businesses. Now let's look at the definition of social enterprise. Social enterprises are businesses that trade to, to address social problems, improve communities, people's life chances, or the environment. They usually make their money from selling goods and or services in the open market. In other words, they have a revenue model behind the social innovation. They can be for profit or not. They can reinvest their profits back into the business, donate the profits, or just distribute dividends to shareholders. Could be a mixture of the three. Just a side note regarding Ashoka. Ashoka is a non-profit organization that promotes social entrepreneurship by connecting and supporting individual social entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. I recommend that you go have a look at the Ashoka website to find about the social entrepreneurs and innovation that they are supporting. This is a great place for inspiration. So how social entrepreneurship uh, lies uh, within the whole enterprises spectrum? On the far right, you have the traditional companies looking at maximizing value for shareholders. Obviously, this is not black or white. You also have traditional companies with strong corporate social responsibility strategies, but also trying to avoid harm or even benefiting their stakeholders. When you move to the middle, this is where we have social entrepreneur uh, enterprises. As I mentioned earlier, they can be for profit. Some will never distribute dividends and only reinvest profits. That's what we call the Mohammed Yunus model, the same Mohammed Yunus that created um, microfinance. Some social enterprises have a hybrid model with a trading activity and a not for profit activity. Business model for social enterprises can take many forms, such as cross-subsidiation, where the enterprise offer free or low-cost product services to beneficiaries, and they pay for it by charging other customers a higher price, for instance. And on the far left, you have the traditional charities. What I want to make sure is that there's no confusion between what we call social enterprise and a responsible business. Again, social enterprises are businesses tackling a social and or environmental issue at the core of their business. They are leveraging business models to create social and or environmental values. Social enterprises are profit agnostic. They can redistribute, they can distribute, they can reinvest, they can donate. Um, they have a, a, a wide way of, of doing their businesses. On the other hand, responsible businesses or companies reducing their risk by reducing their environmental footprint and negative impact on their community and the society. But responsible businesses have not been designed inherently to solve a social issue. As an example, a traditional accounting software company Committing to net zero is considered a responsible business, but not as a social enterprise. In any case, social entrepreneurship is also about entrepreneurship. And to me, the essence of entrepreneurship is seeing problems as opportunities. So if you are looking for an opportunity to start a social enterprise, you can start looking what are the issues in your community, region, or country. Is there one in particular that is painful for you based on your values or history or personal, um, or personal life? For aspiring social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs, it is recommended to look at the social de uh, sustainable development goals 
to and understand them in your current context. I'll come back to the sustainable development goals uh, in, uh, in a minute. Topics that can be addressed with social entrepreneurship include notably access to education, food waste, climate change mitigation, inclusion of minorities, refugees, women empowerment, etc., etc. All right, let's move on now to what is impact. Impact refers to a plan change for better social and or environmental outcomes that can be traced back to a certain measure or intervention taken. Impact can be positive or negative, intended or unintended, direct or indirect. An activity can have immediate and direct impact on certain people or beneficiaries, but it can also have a far more reaching effect on people, organizations, institutions, and entities which are, not, which are not directly engaged. They might not even know they are being affected at all, but the impact of the action might be very significant to them. Social entrepreneurs usually, what we call, usually use what we call a theory of change to explain and demonstrate their pathway to impact. We're going to come back to this uh, in a minute. Time defines impact as reducing suffering, increasing flourishing, and reducing risk. If all entrepreneurs were to take into account reducing suffering, increasing flourishing, and reducing risk when they set up a business, I'm sure we will address the 17 SDGs very quickly. So as mentioned, let's review a bit the Sustainable Development Goals. They are a collection of 17 interlinked objectives designed to serve as a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. Some of them call, some, some of us call them the survival kit for humanity. Whether you like them or not, the SDGs are the most common language and framework used globally to address the global challenges we are facing, including poverty, inequality, climate change, peace and justice. SDGs are being implemented by governments and philanthropic programs, but alone it is not sufficient. The United Nations estimates that there is a 4.2 trillion trillion USD funding gap required to achieve these goals by 2030. We really need to hurry up. They are the starting point of many social enterprises, which focuses on one or several SDGs to build their theory of change. Okay, so let's, let's look into the theory of change. So the theory of change or the impact value chain is a specific type of methodology for planning participation and evaluation that is used in the philanthropy, not for profit, but also in the social entrepreneurship sector to promote social change. The theory of change defines long-term goals and then maps backward to identify necessary preconditions. The impact value chain has become a popular starting point for defining social impact as it clearly sets out the difference between input, output, outcome, and social impact. Impact is the systemic change that you expect to see in the long term. Impact usually takes a few years to happen, which make it, makes, makes it difficult to measure, but it does give a great foundation to define the outcomes which are within our reach to influence or measure. Outcomes are the intended and unintended changes that your stakeholders are experiencing, are experiencing or my experience with your interventions. The outputs are the immediate results of our activities or products, and they are necessary for achieving the outcomes. The activities are the activities we are performing to achieve the outputs. And finally, input refers to the resources or investments needed to ensure that the activities take place. To make things practical, I'm going to share an example of a theory of change of a company that I like a lot. Company is called Oticon. Maybe you know uh, this company? 
So as you may know, autistic people bring cognitive diversity and new perspectives. Specific talents in logic, accuracy, and pattern recognition, as well as intense interest in the areas of IT, physics, mathematics, and technology are prevalent in the autism community. But despite that, they face a lot of unemployment. So Autican closely match each consultant on the job requirements, office culture, and the neurodiversity goals of the client organization. The autistic consultants arrive at work at the local office, providing expertise in high demand skills, such as business analytics, Salesforce administration, software development, cybersecurity, quality assurance, etc., etc. Like any team member, they become integrated into the client's team and function as employees. Quick question. What do you think or which is the SDG Auticon is addressing? I'll give you a couple of seconds to maybe pause the video, have a look at the SDGs and try to think which SDG, so Sustainable Development Goal, Auticon is addressing. It would be SDG 10, reduce inequalities. If you haven't found the solution, I recommend that you go back to the 17 SDGs and look at them in a bit more detail. All right, so now let's look at the theory of change of Auticon. So just so you know, this is a simplified version for academic purposes. The one that they have is way more complex. So you can see here that the, the overall impact is to reduce exclusion for autistic adults and promote diversity in the work, workforce, workplace. Sorry. To do that, the outcomes that they've defined is to measure the quality and the, secure, and the secured employment of those uh, autistic consultants, but also to increase the client understanding and confidence in working with autistic adults. The outputs that the Auticon is measuring is notably the number of consultants they place. Activities include autism friendly processes, training and coaching the consultants, but also onboarding the client and preparing the client to onboard autistic consultant in the whole company. And the input here would be money, expertise, the network, and obviously a lot of compassion and empathy for the autistic community. So that this is a, a simplified, like I mentioned, a simplified version of the theory of change of Auticon. Um, if you want to have a look at their website, you can see the, the more detailed one, but basically that will help you if you start a social enterprise, I recommend that you try to build a theory of change as the starting point. Something that is really critical as well for any social enterprise and any enterprise overall is to do a stakeholder analysis and mapping. It means looking beyond shareholders and clients and understand who can be impacted positively or negatively by your business. Stakeholders include clients, beneficiaries, suppliers, shareholders, employee, the community, the local government, the bank, etc., etc. It can go as far as the family of your beneficiaries. So if we go back to the example of Auticon, who could be the main stakeholders? impacted by Auticon. I'm giving you a couple of minutes to think about it. Okay, so who could be the main stakeholders of a company, a social enterprise like Auticon? They are obviously the autistic consultants, but also the clients where the consultants are placed, the family of the autistic consultants, the government, the other employees, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is to really look beyond shareholders and really think who can be impacting by my business positively or negatively. This is a crucial step to try to mitigate unintended negative consequences. 
I would like now to talk about another topic which is related to impact theory of change and stakeholder analysis. This is what we call the impact management project. It began, it began in 2016 as a forum for building global consensus on how to measure, assess, and report impact on people and the natural environment. The frameworks developed by IMP can be used by any organization and any type of investors. We'll focus on the framework for organizations in this section or companies or social enterprise. The impact management projects reach global consensus that impact can be deconstructed into five dimensions. What, who, how much, the contribution and the risk. Answering those five dimensions of impact will help entrepreneurs classify the impact of their businesses into three categories. We'll uh, we will talk about that later, the three categories. On your own time, you can have a look at those five dimensions and apply them to our case study, Auticon. So once you've answered, you answer those five dimensions of impact, the outcome of those five dimensions will help organization be classified into three impact classes, A, B, or C. A, as in acting to avoid harm, at a minimum, enterprises can act to avoid harm by identifying where the organization is causing harm to people's well-being and the conditions of the natural environment as well as improving those outcomes so they are getting nearer the sustainable range established by the social, societal and ecological threshold. Giving you an example of a company that is classified as A, acting to avoid harm. For instance, a clothing company that historically paid employees at or below minimum wage and had instances of human rights abuse in its supply chain. Its operations were inefficient and carbon intensive versus peers. Two years ago, the company made a commitment to clean up its act. Since then, the company has reported meaningful increases in workforce salary and is on, and it's on its way to becoming a living wage employer. Management has taken responsibility for eradic eradicating human rights abuse across all business relationships. This company is not yet complete, but there's been a marked improvement year on year. The company has set targets to reduce its carbon emission and has made substantial investment in new carbon efficient technologies across its manufacturing plants. This is a perfect example of a company acting to avoid harm. Let's look now at the category B, as in benefiting stakeholders. In addition to acting to avoid harm, Enterprises can, activate, can actively benefit stakeholders by not only acting to avoid harm for all stakeholders, but also maintaining or causing improved well-being for one, for one or more group of people, and including the environment. So an example, a carpet manufacturer that produces carpet tiles through use of environmentally friendly materials and production methods. Through various initiatives, the company has achieved net zero carbon emission across its operation. It is celebrating as a, celebrated as a leading employer in terms of workforce diversity and well-being. It is the buyer and seller of choice in its industry because of its fair practices. Again, a good example of a B company benefiting stakeholders. Last, last category is the C as contributing to solutions. Many enterprises can go further by not only acting to avoid harm for all stakeholders, but also improving the well-being of a group of people or the environment. And they want to go a step further by addressing social change. As an example, a soap company that manufactures a range of personal hygiene products from natural ingredients all ingredients are naturally occurring and ethically sourced. 
Aside from the quality of its product and service, the company focuses on providing quality employment and training people that are struggling to find a job uh, position. Over 90% of the employees are either previously long-term employed or registered as disabled. And if an organization don't belong or doesn't belong to any of the A, B, C, they are usually classified as does or may cause harm. Those categories have been built on the principle that all organizations have positive and negative impacts, intended or unintended. This model, this model has been widely adopted in the investing community as a framework to analyze the activities, outcome and impact of a given organization. Now let's take a second to think. Where do you think Auticon is? In the A, B or C category? Give you a couple of seconds to think about that. The answer is obviously C, contributing to solutions, because they are addressing a huge issue of, of unemployment and trying to provide equal opportunities for a community that, you, that is usually left on the side. So now I would like to give you a couple of social and uh, an example of social enterprises in the in the CE region. Maybe you know them already. So Miwa, for instance, Miwa Technologies developed a smart complex circular system for packaging free sale for the distribution and sale of unwrapped goods that can save up to 90% of packaging material compared to today's, today's disposable packaging system. This is a good example of a, of a social enterprise trying to address climate change. Samurai Labs is a Polish AI company with a team combining over 20 years experience in the field. Their AI is focused on recognizing and stopping, and stopping cyberbullying and child predators. Their technology currently significantly, significantly outperforms Google and Microsoft AI, and they've already partnered with numerous companies across the globe. Have a look at their website. This is really interesting. And Munch, Munch is a platform that enables restaurants, bakeries, shops, and host and hotels to sell or donate their own sold but high quality food, food at a discounted price. Offering it to consumers who offering it to consumers that don't necessarily have enough money to buy food or bakeries. It's like the Too Good To Go app, which is highly popular. And those four students in Hungary creating this platform really address food waste. Again, have a look at their website to find about to find out more what they are doing. This is a great, those are great examples of social enterprise that are based in the CE region. And before we stop this video, I wanted to show you a couple of Social enterprise key players. Uh, first, you have Ashoka. Uh, I think I mentioned them already uh, during the video, uh, which is a, a worldwide organization supporting social entrepreneurs and innovators. Uh, they have a, a, a foot in the sea region with a dedicated website. So have a look for inspiration. You have the Impact Hub which is a place for impact-driven businesses and innovators to meet, work, and exchange. Um, they are present in over 60 countries across five continents, including the sea region, so have a look. Impact Garden is a compass to sustainability and impact. It's a repository of impact information organized by key topics and key players. Have a look at the website. You can find a lot of information on everything related to impact. And last but not least, the SOPACT, if you are considering starting your own social enterprise, this is a tech-based social enterprise committed to help organizations measure impact. They have a great resource section on impact measurement and management with reports, case studies, videos, webinar, a great source for knowledge. 
this is the end of this first video. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to talk about impact investing. See you in a minute.